In today's video, I'll be mixing metal casting with a classic woodworking dovetail joint to make an aluminum bronze and hardened steel axe. I'm really excited about this one because I think it's going to look really cool, so let's get started. First, I sketched out a rough idea of what I wanted it to look like, and then I modeled it in Fusion 360. And once I knew exactly what I wanted it to look like, I designed a pattern that I could use to cast it. Now I can start cutting out the dovetail blade from a piece of 4140 steel. I'm not sure that 4140 is really the best choice of steel for this, but it should work well enough. This piece will be inserted into a sand mold so that bronze can be cast around it. It'll start to make more sense once the project progresses. That looks good, so next I'll weld this little piece of mild steel onto it to give the bronze a little bit more to grab onto. Now I'll harden the steel before casting the rest of the axe. You're really supposed to temper steel after hardening it to remove some of the brittleness, but I'll use the heat from the liquid bronze to do that a little later. I sandblasted it to clean it up, and now this thing's ready to go, but I need to make one more thing before I can start making a mold, and that's a sand core for the eye of the axe. This is just regular sand that I'm adding sodium silicate to. The sodium silicate hardens in the presence of CO2, so it'll hold the sand together. Pretty cool, huh? With that done, now I can start making a mold. I've shown this process many times in my videos, so I won't go into great detail about everything I'm doing. But if you're wondering about the sand that I'm using, it's called Petrobond. It's an extremely fine oil bonded sand that sticks together really well and makes great molds for metal casting. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm leaving this piece of steel inside the mold so that, hopefully, the aluminum bronze that I'm pouring in will flow right up next to it and lock it in place. Aluminum bronze is just an alloy of copper and aluminum, and in this case, I'll be making it with 90% copper and 10% aluminum by weight. I'll melt the copper first, and then once it's melted, I'll add in the aluminum and stir it up.
Well, here it is, and at first glance, it looks pretty good, but there's actually some gaps here. And that happened because as the metal flowed into the mold, it hit this relatively cold steel and it solidified before it could fill out every little nook and cranny. In order to fix that, I'm gonna tilt it this way. And that's gonna force the metal into these little crevices as quickly as possible with as much pressure as possible. So it's gonna fill up this way. Hopefully there's no problems up here with it solidifying before it gets to the top of the ax here, but we'll, uh, we'll fix that if that's a problem. If you're wondering what these are, I'm gonna use these as TIG welding rods in case I have any problems in the castings. That way I can fill any voids with the exact same alloy. Now I just have to cut this piece out and try again. I decided that it would also be a good idea to preheat the steel a bit to give the bronze more of a chance to fill in the dovetails. Well, so far this thing is looking really good, but I won't be sure until I start grinding it. I made the mold so that the bronze actually flows up and over the steel. And the reason I did that is because I didn't want the metal to flow up to the steel and leave a little gap here like this. Instead, it'll go up and over, and then I can grind this away and be left with a nice flush edge. Before I grind any material away, I'm actually going to smash the bronze and hopefully push it in towards any gap that's left here. Obviously, I can't tell if there's a gap yet, but I suspect that when I grind it away, there will be some gap. and that's from the metal contracting and pulling away, which is actually good because since it's a dovetail, if it's pulling away, it's actually forcing the bronze into these angles here, and that makes it a lot stronger. However, it does leave a little gap. It's a big relief to see that the joint looks nice and solid without any major gaps. I had been thinking about how to make this work for quite a while now, so to grind down to the joint and see that it looks good was really satisfying. Now I just have to start grinding metal away and start shaping the head. Here's where those welding rods are going to come in handy. I'll fill in these little imperfections using the exact same alloy and no one will ever know there was a repair done. Well, you know, except for all the people watching this. This is my first project using a belt grinder like this, so it was a bit nerve-wracking just diving into grinding this axe that I spent so much time on, but I just took my time and I'm really happy with how I did. Now I can start working on the handle, and here's what I sketched out. I'll cut it out of this piece of walnut from an old table leaf.
Once I had it cut to the right thickness, I laid out where the eye is going to fit over it. That's what the hole in the axe is called. I found that doing it this way really helps with getting the head mounted nice and straight. Otherwise it's really easy to get off track and end up with the head crooked in more than one direction. Making a handle like this is a slow and methodical process, but taking my time and being very deliberate with what I'm doing really pays off when I end up with a really nice looking handle. Before I can attach the head to the handle, I have to file a slight taper into the eye for the handle to hold onto when I pound in the wedge. Off camera, I made this wedge using the same wood that I made the handle out of. I'll hammer it in with a little wood glue. And it seemed appropriate to use one of my shop made hammers to hammer it in. As a final step, I sealed the wood with some boiled linseed oil. I really couldn't be happier with how this thing turned out. It was definitely a challenging project, but I think it was well worth all the time that I put into it. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. Would you do anything differently? And what do you think about incorporating this idea into other tools? If you would like to follow along with the progress of my projects and help support the channel, then consider joining my Patreon. I post project updates there, and you'll also gain access to any of my 3D printing files, including this one, and a version for making a solid bronze axe instead of one with a steel tip. Well thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Please let me know what you think in the comments, give the video a thumbs up, and subscribe for future projects.